Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Have you ever had a garden? Yep. 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 How about in the back? Have you ever had a garden? <laughs> you know, there's nothing like the taste of a fresh, vine-ripe tomato. Now, I know the store says vine-ripe on the package, but yeah. Um, Jenny calls those pink plastic. <laughs> but getting a, get it, trying to get a, a nice tomato, I mean, you got to give it a few things. It just doesn't happen. I mean, you got to give it water. It's got to have sun. And fertilizer does help. Especially with the fruit production. Fertilizer definitely helps. But you got to make sure it's the right fertilizer. Because I remember one year, it was probably the first year Jenny and I were married, we, or I, planted tomatoes. And I thought, I'm going to use Miracle Grow. <laughs> I had nice big plants. I mean, these plants were this high. And in Michigan, that's a pretty big plant. But there was not one tomato on those things. <laughs> they were beautiful, but no fruit at all. You know, looking at this text. This would be an easy text for me to get up here and do fire and brimstone. <laughs> really, really easy to do that. But let's take a look at this text. You know, if you plant a garden, do you just throw seed out? Just, you know, maybe it's going to hit the sidewalk. Maybe it's going to hit a gravel driveway. You don't do that. I mean, is that logical to when you're planting to just? Well, that's what the kingdom is like. That's what Jesus is saying. He's, he's scattering seed. He's the sower. And some of it doesn't fall on good soil, but he keeps spreading that message, that seed. It's exactly what Jesus did. A farmer went out to sow seed. Some fell along the path, and the birds, boom, got it. Now what you have to remember in this is what was going on before this. Jesus' family did not recognize him. A lot of people have a problem with this. His family, his mother, did not recognize him as a son of God. Because remember, when they went to the house to take him, they were embarrassed. They were going to drag him out of there. What are you doing? <laughs> and then the Pharisees, you know, things had heightened. And they plotted, they were starting to plot to kill him. They knew they had to get rid of him. So as Jesus is telling this parable, you got to keep in mind what happened before. And the devil, he's the bird, stealing that seed away, stealing the word of God away. And that was happening. His followers, I'm not talking to his disciples, I'm talking to his followers, all did not believe. The Pharisees, a lot of them hard-hearted, wouldn't accept it. Didn't see who Jesus is. Now we can look at ourselves and we can place ourselves in these different positions through different times of our life. The what you have to remember is falling along the path, falling along the rocky places, and falling him on the thorns 
He's talking about unbelievers. If you're going to look at the historical context, it was for unbelievers. So we got to be a little bit careful. But there's joy in that because guess what? We are hearing the word of God, the seed. And we continually hear it to strengthen us. Yes, there are times where we don't act like Christians. There are times when we don't think like Christians. There are times when the, when the miseries of this world come upon us And we don't sometimes think we have the faith we should have. Because maybe it's because of our worry. Maybe it's our worry of somebody else. But guess what? Here's, here's the good news. You are still following Jesus. You are not like when they were in the wilderness. And you started following other gods. How many people in here are following another god right now? Not too many hands. <laughs> we got to look at these things in context. It is good for us to look at ourselves as sometimes the seed will get taken. It is good to look at ourselves that maybe sometimes we are shallow in our faith at times but the thing is faith remains because we did not come to faith by ourselves the farmer Jesus scattered his seed we heard the word of God Now, yes, we did act, but he allowed for that. He chose us. He called us out of the darkness into his glorious light. Some of us that were baptized as a baby don't remember the darkness. But the devil continually tries to drag us back continually tries to grab the seed and steal it away from us. Continually tries to infect us to take us away from Christ. Continually tries to set us against each other to try and drag us away from Christ. So in this, in this time of craziness realize that the devil is trying to snatch the good news away and at times he will be successful remember Jesus ministry was going horrible <laughs> it was not going well it was not going the way the disciples thought it would go or how it should go But it is in his weakness of when he emptied himself where the glory of God shone. And when he died on the cross and breathed his last breath and said it was finished, he did that for us. And when he rose on the last day, on the third day, The glory of God shone again. His kingdom is here. Right among us now. The word of God has come in Christ. The good news today is, as believers, we're in the good soil. The bad news is, is the devil's always trying to drag us away. 
But then there's good news. Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Encourage you to look up Ephesians 6 when you get home. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Our battle here on earth is not against each other. It's not against Trump. It's not against Biden. It's not against the independents. It's not against whoever you want to say. It's not against flesh and blood. But it's against the evil. And against the evil, Christ is victorious. We suffer on this earth. The devil like, keeps dry, trying to drag us away from Christ. But remember, we were chosen by God to be his people. And he will keep us in your, his hand. He loves us so much, he got every hair on our head numbered probably even knows the ones that are losing. And when the word of God is spoken, it will not come back to him empty. This is one of the things Daryl told me in one of our conversations, Pastor Daryl. says, if you, if you don't remember anything else, remember... The word of God does not come back empty. It will affect his purpose. And do that for which he sent it. Just like that throne, the throne of the seed. If you throw it everywhere, it doesn't make sense. It seems like you just kind of focus it. To actually get it in the, the, the planning row. <laughs> get some dirt on it <laughs> but no spread the seed as the kingdom of God is here in Christ as you sit this next week and you listen to the news take joy in this in our suffering there is strength. When we are weak, he is strong. He has already accomplished everything for us. So we have nothing to worry about. Are there going to be concerns? Yes. Most definitely. But as far as your faith in Christ... He has given that to you and he will keep you in that faith. Stay in his word. Stay in that word. Think of the tomato. A nice, large, like an heirloom tomato. The red, juicy, sweet. Jesus provide the way for us to have fruit. Just continue to hear his word. Now and always. Until he comes on the last day for us. Stay firm in the faith. Amen.